Well, hello there, my Next Gen fam. Welcome to Mentor Moments with Next Gen HQ. We are so excited to have you for yet another episode where we are coming together. We're sitting back, enjoying the conversation to come uh, in order to provide even more resources that you need along your journey, even more momentum, if I can say so myself. We are so, so excited to have Dominic Scarpelli on with us today. Dominic is a financial advisor at Northwestern Mutual who is devoted to a beautiful mission of developing enduring relationships with people and businesses while providing them with comprehensive financial strategies. So that's very much who I am, Dominic, as well. Love the fact that you have that focus on relationships and I can always use some financial tips. So thanks for coming <laughs> onto the stage with us today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much for having me, Rachel. Um, looking forward to the conversation. Oh, amazing. So Dominic was welcomed into the Next Gen fam uh, because of the lovely Dylan Gambardella, who you all know very well. So Dominic is fully prepared to help you along your journey and get you get you some knowledge that maybe you didn't even realize you needed. So Dominic, are you ready to do some rapid fire questions with us? It's a little bit of a Next Gen HQ tradition here. Yeah, looking forward to it. <laughs> Amazing. What is one book you'd recommend to others? I'm reading about four of them right now. So um, the one that actually, give me two seconds. I'll see which one I have, I have right here. Two seconds. <laughs> this is actually one of the favorite ones I have right now. Ninja oh. Selling. It's, um, it's a really good book. Um, it actually goes into more so of the, the thought process behind selling and what makes an individual tick and their personalities versus like selling products. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it's more of a... A, um, a, a, a personalization to selling and making sure that you understand who they are as an individual and what, why they want to, why would they, why would they even want to be speaking with you uh, mm -hmm. in the first place? So it's a, it's a, it's a good book. Um, I'm reading a couple other ones as well. So that's a really, really good one though. Amazing. I'm definitely going to look that up. Could always use some knowledge when it comes to that topic. <laughs> Amazing. What is your Sunday Nirvana? Ooh, um, and also, <laughs> seriously, I'm a big, big football watcher. Uh, I, I watch the NFL religiously. So I'm a Bears fan, Chicago Bears fan, even though I'm down here in Georgia. Um, my whole family's from the Chicago area. So I would say Sunday Nirvana is, is having my entire things prepped, having everything I need to have uh, fully ready and, and to go for Sunday and not having to worry about it. And I'm just sitting back and relaxing and watching Red Zone or any game on television it. right now. <laughs> I love that. And then on that note, getting ready for the busy work week ahead, what is one technique that you use when you want to dive into really focused work? So, well, I, my, my assistant and I both kind of coordinate this together. I, I actually have, and I've written about this, but I've got a, a week's uh, a letter basically that I write to myself and I, I break it down by quarter, well, by year, by quarter, by month, but then by week. And every single week I have a, a strategic plan around what I'm going to do for the week. And I have like little check boxes about what I'm going to accomplish, which makes me more driven every single day to, to make sure every single one of those are, are moving along the way. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment. So I find that a lot of people burn out uh, when, you know, you're, you're, if you don't have something like that, um, and it makes you feel a little bit more accomplished. So I love that. That is such a beautiful tip. Getting into writing, writing ourselves letters and creating that just kind of focus and that strategy mindset for just even us in our personal and professional lives, it seems. <laughs> Amazing. Yep. Well, Dominic, now that we know you a little bit better, a little bit more on a personal level, including that you're from Chicago, which is great to hear. <laughs> I've never been, but always wanted to go. Uh, we are going to dive more into the story now and kind of the whole sure. entire reason that you are on this path that you're currently are. But we love to kind of hit the rewind button and go way, way back in time, uh, which for you was, I would definitely love to chat a little bit about your educational experience, because I did see that you have uh, very much a liberal arts degree and kind of yeah. that liberal arts background from school, which I know some people might kind of not uh, see the link between that and your work within kind of the 
financial world today. And even to me, it kind of seems like very, very different sides of the coin. <laughs> I'd love to know, like, what were your experiences that you have taken from liberal arts into the current work that you're doing? And if you could change your degree at all, would you, would you not pick psychology and sociology as your focuses? Yeah. So actually my initial path was political science. I was going to go that route and become an attorney. And I very quickly found out that that was not for me um, at all. And my passion for psychology and sociology was really because of the relationships with people. Like that's, that's why, that's what I do what I do now. Um, And learning the intricacies of human behavior you know, people's mentalities, their wants, their goals, their vision for the future, really just everything about them, what makes them who they are absolutely fascinates me. And, and it still does, obviously, to this day. So um, it has had a massive impact on my career now and my growth and development as a financial advisor. So I, I really wouldn't change it, honestly, in any way. Um, you know, the, the, the numbers and the math and the financial piece can can come there. But the it's much more important to have uh, the ability to be like, make a connection with someone uh, in our in our world versus just being, you know, a numbers guy. So um, the the psychology behind it and the sociology behind it has been extremely helpful, paramount, I would say, to my success here. Oh gosh, I love that, and I love that it came also from a little bit of a transition. It seemed you had one one path one goal in mind, which then became something totally different, yet at the core, the very reason that of your studies, the reason why you're currently working in the path that you do today, those haven't changed. And it all becomes about people and relationships and wanting to help others succeed and impact them. Exactly. Yep. Spot on. I love that. So kind of jumping a little bit more into the career side and your trajectory there, it definitely seems like you were able to very quickly step up the ladder from what I was able to do when I did a little bit of digging into, into your LinkedIn just to get to know you. A little light and stalking, got it. Okay. Just, just some very <laughs> light stalking. I'm from that generation. We've perfected yeah, that very yeah. well. <laughs> Uh, but it seems like you went from assistant executive to national director of sales and beyond within a pretty tight amount of time. But what experiences from all of that led to that really strong interest of wanting to focus on financial advising, investment, helping individuals understand wealth and growing into that space? Was there a particular tick over into that side? Well, I, w- I wouldn't say a particular tick because it it really developed from like, I've always had a passion for finances and planning from like myself. Um, it was probably instilled in me by my father when I was, I mean, he was, he was literally an avid studier and learner of anything in the financial world. And he read a ton of books, made me read a ton of books about it. I mean, when I was younger, like I was reading just two, three books a month around wealth, uh, stock market growth, um, saving efficiently, so forth, so on. So it was always like a passion of mine in general. And then um, right after college, I actually took all the money I ever saved. Um, I started working when I was 12, believe it or not, had about 20, 25 lawns that my friend Michael and I would mow. And uh, we would we would actually go over to Fraser Street in Roswell in Georgia and um, hire a couple workers to help us. And then one would mow the front, one would mow the back, and we'd do some edging and cleanup. And that coupled with lifeguarding, coupled with working at Wendy's, I had like five or six jobs going throughout high school and then working all the way through college um, as well with two jobs while paying for my degrees. Um, I I literally took two years off and just disappeared and traveled the world. Um, And I learned from multiple cultures, actually been to like 37 countries. So um, took about two and a half, almost three years off and just disappeared, Uh, came back with basically no money, Um, was like, what do I do now? (laughs) And trying to figure out, well, maybe I can get into healthcare, maybe I can get into helping people, you know, on that front. And then I ended up finding a role in like healthcare IT and as like an administrative assistant to start off. Uh, Quickly moved up the ladder, like you mentioned, Uh, I was in the sales role very quick um, for a healthcare IT company. And then right after that was recruited to go be a national sales director. Uh, And then, with the company that I was with called Millennia, I was doing a little bit more than sales. I was actually working with uh, medical groups, big hospitals, health systems, and most of it was, was like analyzing their financial data, 
helping them uh, build like investments and into their into their personnel um, and really building like planning models to help them grow their staff and grow their revenues uh, over time and just really add to their bottom line. But then um, I guess it was probably right around. So there was there was one kind of caveat event where I I just either one one catalyst event, excuse me, not caveat one catalyst event that I just I didn't. It was a group up in New York. It was the largest independent urology group in the country. And we had just brought them on as clients. And I was like, well, now what? Right. Like, what's next? Like, the money is great. This is fun. But who am I really helping? And I think it was actually that moment um, is why I transitioned from being a, a, you know, a rep or a national sales and an analyst to being an independent uh, advisor and helping families and individuals. Um, and that's what led me here to Northwestern uh, and run my own financial strategy group. So I get to work along some of the best and brightest minds in the country and thankful to say that uh, I found my, my, my passion and my thing. I'll, I'll be here for the next 30 years. Like I'm not going anywhere. So that's uh, I found my calling, which is nice to say. I love that. It seems like in that one moment when you were asking yourself that question of this is great, but what next? It's almost like it was a little bit deeper than that. It was almost you figuring out what your true purpose was and what you really kind of wanted to bring to the world. And that particular situation just wasn't quite filling that cup, but this next phase of it did for you. Yes, absolutely. I this, this couldn't say it any better. This is literally my home. I found oh. it. I love that. What was the, what was the best place that you visited when you went on your wild New, your New wild Zealand. travels? New Zealand, hands down, ah, best, okay. best place in the world by far. <laughs> like leaps and bounds away from everywhere else. Uh, it's, uh, if you do get a chance to go, everybody should go. It's it's incredible. It's very it's a very long flight, but it is on my list. Literally an entire day. You basically lose two days. Yeah, it's it's a rough one, but yeah, uh, worth it. Totally worth it. Okay. I'll take your word on that and I'll let you know when I, when I book that flight one day. (laughs) Amazing. So then jumping into kind of what you're doing now, exactly what you just kind of brought up before of feeling just like you were in the perfect place and will be so for the rest of your life. Um, I love that you kind of have this focus on helping the clients that you work with build a vision for their future and really see how the building blocks that they have today. And that future vision is so important to just kind of structuring how they probably make every action and make every decision. But how do you go about building your own future vision for where you kind of see yourself going? Is it the same process? Do you have even bigger goals for yourself? I, I would probably say that it's, it's not the same process most people have um, because it's a lot more involved. Um, and I, this, I mean, this started well, well when I was younger, but now, I mean, my incredible wife, Brooke and I, we literally sit down and we map it out. I mean, we have a one-year plan, a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, these, these visions that we have for the future. Um, and then I break them down by month, by week, by day. You know, I, I, like I said earlier, I, I personally write myself a letter every single quarter detailing both the personal and the business aspects of our lives. Um, because here's, here's what happens, right? Every big audacious goal seems completely unachievable when you just look at the big goal, like you look at these giant pictures, you're like, holy crap, how am I going to get there? Like, it seems impossible. But then when you start to break it down into daily tasks, it really becomes quite simple. I mean, it's not, you just have to do it consistently, right? So dreaming big is great, but then the follow through and the little details are really what makes it happen. And I've always told, I say this all the time, but nobody plans to fail, but most people fail to plan. Um, And it'll just, absolutely shock you how much is achievable when you plan for it. Like I've gone back and read over these letters and I'm like, yeah, like this is all, this is here. This comes to fruition every, I mean, it's amazing. I mean, there are some times where you'd fall short, but it it doesn't matter. Just as long as you have it out there do existence, it's going to happen. So that's, that's what we do. And hopefully I can instill that in other people. They don't have to be that detailed about it, but you know, it, it helps, I guess. So. 
I love that. I think it's so perfect also for many people who are going to listen and watch this interview. Uh, we're talking younger entrepreneurs who have these massive dreams to build these huge companies that help impact the world, that impact their bottom line, kind of everything involved. And when you see that and when you just say, yeah, I want to build this massive company, that seems like the biggest, most audacious goal that is never going to be be achieved, but it's in the day-to-day -day actions that you take that are actually building towards that goal that will, that will get you there and the understanding of what it's really going to take to bring that to life in your present moment. Yeah, if it was easy, everybody do it, right? <laughs> That's very true, but we are special breeds. Exactly. It's not easy, but we still run after it. Exactly. <laughs> Amazing. Well, Dominic, just to go ahead and end uh, this conversation, which has been so great so far, but we're going to go out on a bang. I have one final question for you. We'd love to know what your hope for the next generation of leaders is. If you can impart them with some words of wisdom, mm -hmm. what would those be? Be curious. Uh, the desire to learn from others who have been in their shoes before, um, just, just take advantage of that. Like, make sure that the people who have been there, you seek them out as mentors and then make it your own, right? Don't, don't close yourself off to opportunity. Um, be willing to take time to hear someone out, even if you don't think you need their help, right? If, if you think you've already got someone, you go to advice in that arena, there's no monopoly on good ideas. Uh, you will learn something in every interaction you have. And if you don't, you'll know, hey, I, I'm buttoned up. I'm good in that area. I'm, I, that, that's a learning in itself. It feels good to know that you're fine. Um, so that and, and, and work, uh, work ethic, there's literally no replacement for work ethic. Um, you know, plus if you have a passion for it, right, it's not really work. It's, it's, it's your life. So if you love doing it, it's not going to seem daunting. It's just going to be, that's, that's your life. So um, that's what I I'd say. That. Be curious and, and work. <laughs> be curious and work and find what you love doing work at. So it doesn't even feel like it anymore. <laughs> yes. Dominic, exactly. well, that was that was so fantastic. If an extra is curious to kind of continue this conversation on or ask you a question, is there a great platform that they can use to connect with you somehow? Yeah, um, LinkedIn's fantastic. Um, I use LinkedIn quite frequently. Um, okay. Shockingly, still use Facebook a lot. I don't know why, but Instagram, Facebook, I'm on there too. But LinkedIn's the best one um, where you can always just, just shoot me a ring or give me an email. I've, I've got a website um, that I can <laughs> post to you guys, but uh, LinkedIn's the best. Amazing. Go find him on LinkedIn. Dominic, I'm going to find you on Facebook so we can get you into our next gen online group and we can keep having these conversations together. Perfect. Looking <laughs> forward to it. Well, thank you so much for taking this time today. Next geners, you heard it right from Dominic. Go be curious, go do the things that you love, and we will be here next time for the next mentor moments. Thank Bye, you, Rachel. <laughs>